Jennifer, I wanted to cover two things in uh, in the chat experience. And the first one is the something I've been looking forward to for a while, which is the ability to hone in and pinpoint files a little bit more uh, specifically, right? So this is available in the office.com slash chat experience, as well as Copilot in Microsoft Teams. And I'm going to talk a little bit, you know, of like some of the fragmentation of like what's showing up in different website experiences. We'll cover that in a second. But where I want to show you to get to this is if you go to office.com and then on the sidebar, you've got Copilot. You can open up this Copilot chat experience. Or if you're in Microsoft Teams and you click Copilot right here, or you click Copilot in the side rail, you also have it available right there. But on the website, I wanted to show this new box that we have that says add people, files, and more. I, I don't really know why Microsoft is giving me three ways to do something within like the same three inches on my screen, but there's three ways to invoke this. You can use a forward slash command. So if I hit forward slash on my keyboard, it pops up this kind of like recent item picker. It's got people, files, and meetings, and emails. Or if I click the plus button down here, it opens up the same thing. Or if I click the paperclip item, uh, it brings up the exact same window. But this is how you mention things, where you say, hey, Copilot, I want you to look at this particular Word document, summarize it for me, or help me compare these two slide decks, something like that. And the complaints I've heard a lot of people is like, okay, it doesn't have the file I'm looking for in this list because I didn't recently open it or it's not showing it for some reason. Well, now rolling out across 365 uh, Copilot experiences is this new upload button right here. Now, if you click this, it gives you a file browsing experience. And if you click attach, it's gonna bring up the uh, cloud file browser, which is defaulted to your OneDrive. And then you can also dig into SharePoint sites as well. So if I go to my files, this is just my raw OneDrive itself, all the files and folders that are in my OneDrive. So I could select like one file, I could select multiple files, and I can do up to five files I can mention and I can hit select. But if it's not in my OneDrive, you notice this quick access area right here. This is all of the SharePoint sites that you have access to. And some people who are kind of, you know, new to this experience, you may not realize that all of your Teams channels, you know that files tab that's in your Teams channel, that is just SharePoint on the back end. So you're gonna see your Microsoft Teams also listed right here. If you don't see it listed under quick access, there's also the more places. So I can browse all of the SharePoints that I'm a member of, like this Copilot Lovers community. I can click into that and I can also see all of the channels because this is happens to be a Microsoft team. I can go into the general channel and I can access like that loop file. I select it and now I've mentioned that file and I can like go on with my day. So if you know where the file is, but you don't necessarily know what it's called, you can use this new upload button and you can kind of navigate to that particular file, select it and, and now you're talking about that file. Um, John, can I offer one more tip on that for people yeah, go who ahead, are tuning man. in? So mm -hmm. can you go back to that menu that you had popped up where it showed yeah, some of sure. the quick access files? Um, yeah. So if I click more and then upload and then attach. Yep. So you mentioned going to more places to see mm -hmm. quick access, but sometimes if you're a member of like an enterprise, you might have more teams and more SharePoint sites than you can keep track of. Yeah. My you UI one has like 75. <laughs> So the pro tip is open a new tab in your web browser and navigate okay. to a SharePoint site. Okay. Yeah. So if we go back over to office mm -hmm. and then we click like the waffle right here, you can go to all of your SharePoint sites and you can kind of like drill in that way. Or if you know, like the URL of like whatever.sharepoint.com slash my favorite community, you could also go there directly, but I'm going to go like the sandbox home. So here's so this a SharePoint site. Navigate well, to the primary document library in the in yeah. In let's do John's things. playground and then documents. There you go. Okay. 
So from here, if you look in the ribbon up at the top or the command bar, you'll see in the center mm -hmm. of the screen, it says pin to quick access. It's in the center. There you yeah, go. Yeah, right there. You can navigate to the site itself. So go SharePoint, mm -hmm. home, and then navigate to it. And then you can pin that to quick access. And the next time you go to that menu, it'll actually show up in that sidebar um, uh, for quick access. And you can, you'll see the most recent there, and then you can pin the ones that are important to you. But that's mm -hmm. a pro tip if you don't see it or if you have too many teams and you have too yeah. many SharePoint sites that you're a part of, navigate to the actual location that you want to see, that you want to mm -hmm. pull content from and choose that shortcut up at the top to pin to quick access. And then it's just a matter mm -hmm. of refreshing the screen and then yeah. you'll be able to see those additional locations along that quick access menu along the side. That's a great tip. So I just did that co-pilot lovers that was under more places and it's not showing up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to refresh my browser. And then I'm going to go back into that upload area. And now there you go. Co-pilot lovers. And it's got a pin icon right there because I took action to pin it. That's a great tip. Thanks for pointing that out. I never would have remembered to tell people that. <laughs> That's one of those under the radar type features that mm -hmm. showed up in the command bar that like until you really explore it, you don't understand the impact of it. And to be truthful, it was mm -hmm. Mark B. Anderson from Sympraxis who did a blog post on it that like really got me thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? That actually makes a ton of sense. And so from that point on, that's one thing that I coached mm -hmm. to my team, our teammates, uh, to if something's important to you and you're pulling documents from it regularly, maybe pin mm -hmm. it to that quick access so that you can access it in Copilot. You can access it when you do a move to or a copy to and you're moving files back and forth. Those are locations that you work with frequently. Make sure they're readily available versus just depending on the recent relevant from the system to automatically surface what it thinks you might be looking for. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I wanted to cover outside of the, the upload uh, feature is the new catch up tab as well in Copilot chat. So again, if you go to office.com slash chat, we've got what we've always had is this try these prompts area where it's like, this is powered by uh, Copilot lab. And it gives you like a place to start. Like what's the latest with Alistair. So I can like bring him up and, and then it, it mentions him. So these are kind of conversation starters. Something that's new in the Copilot chat experience is this catch up button. If I click this, it, oh great, it's not going to show. It gives you essentially, if you're in a real environment, it gives you a ribbon, basically almost like a storyline of like, uh, like squares along this middle section right here, where it'll say, Hey, you've got this meeting coming up. Do you want to catch up for this meeting or prepare for the meeting? Hey, you've got this, uh, this, um, document that was sent to you in a team's chat three days ago. You haven't up, uh, you haven't opened it yet. Do you want to get a summary? So it's kind of like, here's some things that you might be missing out on. Do you want to like kind of drill into them so you can kind of proactively look and prepare for things and kind of like, uh, get through a bunch of stuff that might've like you missed on your radar. Uh, so that's the catch up tab within the copilot chat. And I want to point out that like, so in office.com chat, we've got all of these features. If I go to copilot in teams, you see, I've got, you know, some of the features like the upload buttons not showing up right now, but the catch up tab is if I go to copilot.microsoft.com, I've got the work tab. I don't have catch up and I don't have the upload button. What is going on? <laughs> and I think I want to throw a little bit of shade at Microsoft here to say, if you are confused by this fragmented chat experience, you are not alone. Um, I am also confused to the point that I created a table about this to show what I am seeing in all of the different chat experiences across what Microsoft calls Copilot. So not even just Copilot for M365, but what they call Copilot with commercial data protection. There are different capabilities in the different experiences. And um, it is difficult to manage all of that right now. Um, I hope Microsoft will be bringing those experiences together because I shouldn't have to maintain a table of what button is in which of these stupid chat URLs that I have to remember 
off the top of my head. I don't want to open four browser tabs to just use the thing that Microsoft calls Copilot. Um, but ranting aside, I want to be helpful and let you know, this is what I have found that I can do in the different chats. So if you want to attach files, I've seen this in the office.com, then click the chat button. I've also seen this in chat in Outlook, and I've seen it in chat in Teams. So um, that is where I have seen it, but I cannot find it in copilot.microsoft.com. So that, that URL where you've got the work and web tab, it's not in that one. Likewise, plugins are not showing up there, but they are showing up in these other endpoints and so on and so forth. Um, Andy, I did want to call out, when we talked on Monday, all we had was this experience where if I go to chat and I click, uh, I click the attach button and then upload. Let me get to it here. You see how it says only attach cloud files mm -hmm. in my EY account. I now have attach cloud files and I have upload local file too. So I'm seeing both of them now. So I think this is a uh, process that's still rolling out, but we had some confusion about like, why the heck did they call it upload? If it's only cloud files, there is a local file one that's coming. Um, I've been seeing it in some of my browsers and then not in other browsers. And it might be even like a cookie thing going on. So I want to update this real quick for you guys and say that I have now seen this in these other places. And what excites me about the attached local file is that gives you the ability to go to like office.com slash chat, click upload, and then click the local option. And I download like PDFs from Gartner or something like that. And I don't want to have to go put it in my OneDrive, wait for the Microsoft graph to become aware of it, wait for the upload to process, and then ask Copilot about it. I just, it's in my downloads folder. Why can't I just slap it in the chat? That's what this button does. So whenever you get that upload uh, local file, which is right underneath this attach area, when you do that, it brings up your local computer. You can grab that download that you just did, and then you can chat about it immediately without having to wait for it to, uh, to kind of like percolate through the system. So I wanted to point that out. I found that out yesterday in my production environment, <laughs> you know, which isn't any current kind of early access. I think it's just one of those rollout issues of uh, you see things show up and then two days later you see it in the place you didn't see it yesterday. So Before we move away from that chart, though, I do want sure. to call out something on the web tab. <clears throat> yeah. The, the web tab is is my starting place. And mm -hmm. I, I'll explain why. When you go to the web tab, it doesn't pull from your work data automatically. Mm -hmm. You have to toggle that work switch up there in the corner. Yeah. The this area tab, right here is called Copilot with commercial data protection. So it has like a green shield on it, but it does not know anything about your Microsoft Graph data. You go to the work tab and that is Copilot for M365. Right. So... And that commercial data protection is soon to be called enterprise data protection. That's a yes. recent public announcement for Microsoft. They're making the change there. Yeah. But I like going here as a starting point when I want to start from scratch, when I want to mm -hmm. research, when I want to ask questions, when I want to do a web search, I'll go here first because it's not going to pull my work content as the primary source. And that's what the work tab tends to do. That's what the other copilot tabs tend to do. They look at work first, then they look mm -hmm. at the training data. Then they look at the web searches. If you toggle the um, plugin to extend to the web, but I like going to the web tab first so that I can start a clean search, mm -hmm. extend, you know, the training data into the web and start pulling things back. But notice the other things that are highlighted here image generation if mm -hmm. you want to use copilot to create an image you go to the web tab because that's one of the only places that you can create an image with natural language mm -hmm. image yeah, uploading a picture of your refrigerator and asking what you can make with these ingredients copilot under the web tab can do that because it has the gpt vision capabilities 
or a whiteboard mm -hmm. and explain the process and help you to categorize it. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a physical I, whiteboard. I like to do that with whiteboard drawings of like architectural diagrams. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I know what I've drawn, but I can't, I'm having trouble like explaining it to a human. Um, tell me what this means, right? And so you can ask Copilot uh, based off a picture and it can kind of, uh, you know, make it, make it sound that didn't come out of your crazy brain, you know? Speaking of brain, mm -hmm. I we both spend a lot of time in the personal productivity world, the Tiago Forte, Cal Newport, Adam Grant world, trying to figure out just how to be a little bit more productive. They mm -hmm. put a lot of screenshots on social media with like complex processes or, you know, some charts that kind of try to simplify processes. I'll screenshot mm -hmm. those and go right into Copilot chat and ask it, okay, help me to understand this and apply it to my workflow. And it'll take the image Mm -hmm. And it'll, you know, extrapolate what's in it and it'll turn it into a conversation. And then I can kind of figure out how something like that fits into my workflow. So the image understanding yeah. there is great. Mm -hmm. it and it also then has mic the capabilities where you can talk to Copilot, the notebook, which we talked about in the past as well, mm -hmm. where you can kind of go back and forth and you can um, basically tune your prompts and kind of uh, create them collaboratively with Copilot. And then that attaching local files as well. Um, the difference is this doesn't upload it to your OneDrive because it's just the web tab. Yeah. But I just wanted to call that out. Like that tab, I think is like that toggle is kind of overlooked because it's not connecting to the graph yeah. and pulling back, you know, work data. Sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you just want to get to some specific information mm -hmm. um, without all all of the the nuances uh or all the you know conflict with what you've already created sometimes yeah. you just want to start blank and this this web tab is the way to do that but it can also do some pretty crazy things with images